Here he comes. It's on the minute. Good morning. Welcome to the Tulare County Planning Commission, December 14th, 2016. Information concerning the following agenda items is available for public consideration during normal working hours at the Resource Management Agency Permit Center, 5961 South Mooney Boulevard, Visalia, California. The staff will assist in answering questions and for <coughs> further information about the Planning Commission, you can see the last page of the agenda. All public hearings are scheduled for certain times or as soon thereafter as a matter can be heard. All non-timed items will be considered following the public hearings or when time permits. Could we have the roll call, please? Gong? Here. Millies? Here. Elliot? Here. Diaz? Here. Commissioner Whitlatch is absent. Patigliano? Here. Aguilar? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the discretion of the Chair. In order to be considered by the Planning Commission, testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for the public hearings. At all times, please use the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Chairman, for the record, uh, Mr. Whitlatch is Thank present. Thank you. Is there uh, any public comment at this time for non-printed agenda items? Okay, thank you. Um, do we have a motion for the approval of the November 9th, 2016 minutes? I'll make a motion we approve the November 9th, 2016 minutes. I'll second. We have the vote, please. Gong? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? <clears throat> yes. Aguilar? Yes. The motion approved. We now have public, par, I'm sorry, parcel map public hearings. Action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing. Unless anyone wishing to discuss any of these items requests that it be pulled for a separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any item unless requested. In any case, there will be a separate vote on each of these items. Uh, we have quite a few of them. Uh, has everyone looked? We have tentative parcel map number PPM 16-025, Alfredo Rios and Jose Rios. You feel like, do you want me to go down and name them all off or have you all looked at them and we have no reason to pull? Uh, through the chair, uh, first of all, uh, if we open the, the public hearing and then yes, go. We will now open the public hearing for tentative parcel maps. We have tentative parcel map number PPM 16-025, Alfredo Rios and Jose Rios. Tentative parcel map number PPM 16-034, Christine Rocca, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, Forrester Weber and Associates. Parcel map number PPM 16-037, Jesse Dale and Karen Irvin, James Winton and Associates. And we have 
Map number PPM 16-024, South Fork Land Holding, LLC, Paul and Eric Gradanis, Four Creeks Incorporated. Map number PPM 16-036, Sutton Pistachio, Neil Zerling, Land Surveyor Incorporated. Okay, that's it. So we have, I will, but no one has any reason to pull any. Okay, now I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Yes, I did open it. I'm getting helpers today, aren't I? Wow. <laughs> it's my last day. Yeah. Christmas time. I know. Santa's helpers. I know. Got a lot going on. Okay. Uh, we will first have the first vote on parcel map number PPM 16-025. Alfredo Rios and Jose Rios is it? I'll make a motion. We approve PPM 16-025. <clears throat> I'll second. Yes. To the chair, uh, can we make sure that the categorical exemption and project are both read into the record? In the motion, please. Uh, a, category, a category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations, Section 15303, Class 3 pertaining to new construction or convent, uh, conversion of small structure and conditionally approved tentative partial map PPM 16-025. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Thank you. Could we have the vote, please? Dong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Figliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Do we have a motion for PPM 16-034? I'll make the motion to approve a categor categorical exemption consistent with California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map lot line adjustment number PPM 16-034. I'll second it. Song? Yes. Million? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved. Map number PPM 16-037. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve categorical exemptions consistent with the California Environmental, Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines. Pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulations Section 15315, Class 15, pertaining to minor land divisions in urbanized areas. Approve one exception pertaining to parcels being created within the urban area boundary and not having direct frontage on an existing public road and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM 16-037. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. And the vote, please. Dong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved. <clears throat> Map PPM 16-024. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. We approve category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to the Title 14 California Code Regulation, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of a small structure and conditionally approve the tentative partial map number PPM 16-024. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Thank you. And could we have the vote? Song? Yes. Haley? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Whitlatch? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Map number PPM 16-036. Do we have a motion? Excuse me. I'll make the motion that we approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small structures 
and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM 16-036 with the requirement to file a final map. I'll second that. Thank you. And the vote. Song? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Petigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. We now have a public hearing on a minor modification, MIM 16-036, to special use permit number PSP 11-037, Mike and Sally Pace. This is authorizing a minor modification, number MIM 16-036, to modify for previously approved Special use permit number PSP 11-037 located on a three plus acre portion of a 10 plus acre property in the AE exclusive agriculture zone. Site is located at 19524 Avenue 364 on the north side of Avenue 364 approximately 1000 feet west of road 196 and approximately two miles northwest of Woodlake. And our contact is April Hill. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman Petitbiano and Commissioners. We, ask, we are asking the Planning Commission to determine that modifying the site plan and modifying the related conditions of approval is a minor modification and that the requested changes may be considered by the Planning Director. Here's an aerial of the facility showing the assemblages area and and parking by the applicant's residence and the pasture where, where guests drive through. Now the neighbor across the Avenue 364 from the applicant's residence objected to cars going by his residence and uh, entering the main driveways to reach the parking area in the north. He also uh, objected to party activities that were <coughs> located, that were in the French yard. Uh, a bar gazebo had been constructed before the applicants purchased um, the property about 70 feet in the front and that was considered a little that's a little too close for the assemblages of people ordinance um, which required 300 feet a new condition of approval specifies that activity shall be contained inside the property boundaries after staff negotiations over the last several years, guests and staff for commercial events were directed to enter and exit through the pasture on the east. They drove next to the, um, the fence line and then over to the parking area in order to avoid the sprinkler, sprinklers inside the pasture. But then the neighbors to the east were impacted by headlights as they came out. Minor modification proposes that the exit entrance and exit route be through the middle gate and diagonally up through as shown on this site plan. And that will be a change. The new access point will be authorized by the revised site plan and the new condition of approval. This access point will reduce the headlight glare towards the adjoining properties and in addition the applicant will raise screening tar will have screening tarps uh, before each assemblage event ends per a new condition of approval. Here's a new access point. This is the uh, neighbor across the street, about 300 feet down. There's the new drive path with a decomposed granite surface. These are the proposed. This is the proposed light barrier. Um, Chairman Padigliano, the the um, neighbors concerned were. Um, are not as concerned about having a second light barrier at the bottom of the hill and I will suggest that we eliminate that requirement just to have the one at the top of the hill with a diagonal path no headlights won't will be impacting them 
The new conditions of approval are to contain activities to within the assemblage site on the property boundary, to change the access point to midway through the pasture from the residence's driveways, to shield the neighbors from headlights with tarps, and to continue controlling dust by watering, but specifically before staff's arrival, before the guests arrive, and before the guests and staff depart. As a public hearing, the notice provided a 10-day comment period mailed to surrounding property owners within 300 feet, also published in the Visalia Times Delta. Comments were received from Jerry Keithley, the neighbor to the, to the east, um, the assemblage does take place only on the 10 acre parcel, although the, the pipe pace is also owned as a small parcel to the right. This ends staff's report. If you have any questions, in the audience are the applicants, neighbors Lisa and Flint Wass, and uh, others may show up, but that's it for now. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I, may I clarify a little bit? April, could you put back on the, the site plan? All right, um, I, just to kind of clarify where we're at. This is an approved uh, use permit for this assemblage. Uh, what we're here to try to do is clarify that the, the, the site plan did not specify where the drive approach was going to be. There's existing driveways near the residence. Could you point out where the residence? Yeah. There they are. There's, there so there's existing here. driveways there. That's, that's where they started to um, utilize the facility. The neighbor to the, to the south there didn't like the, the traffic in front of his house and stuff. So to, to try to accommodate that, we, we looked at a different alternative entrance where it would go, go ahead and show the, the first route, the first alternative, up and then over. And that was okay with, with, with that neighbor, but what that did was cause other impacts to other neighbors, specifically the Wasses, creates some additional dust and headlights, which impacted their, uh, their property. So we've tried some other compromises, and what we've come up with, what we think is the best fix, is this diagonal, so the headlights do not shine into anybody's other houses, other than when they're just exiting the parking lot to the north there. Um, uh, so that's why that, that, shape, that structure is put up with the tarps to block the headlights as they turn onto that drive. Once they're on the drive, the angle uh, of that road eliminates the impact from the headlights to adjoining neighbors. We think that this is a, the compromise because it's still not, the entrance is still not going up against the neighbor to the south um, property. We're, st we're still avoiding that. So the, the guests are coming in well before his residence and they're leaving uh, the same route. So. <coughs> I think this was the compromise that I think works best for the neighbors. So we wanted to bring that to, to your, for your consideration. It's really not uh, a change of condition because it was never specified where the drive approach was. It was just assumed that they would use the existing driveways. And that's why we're asking for your consideration to consider a minor modification. Therefore, then the, it can be done as, as a minor mod and director sign up on it. So just to kind of clarify that, and I believe the wasses, the wasses are here as well as the applicant, uh, Sally Pace, so. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> I will, if we, do we have anything? What's any the, the distance from, from that place to the, the, it's from there to there, I mean, to from, the next neighbor? From here is 300 the other feet. The other way, to the east. To the east the is. Neighbors. Map. It seems like a long ways. It is, but it's also down a hill, and so the lights, the headlights, really got them. Okay. Even though there was a, you know, a, a line of a line of trees, they were immature trees. They've uh, since put in other ones uh, to thicken that um, that shield, but top of the hill is going to make a big difference. Okay, I'm. If there's no other questions, I will now open the public comment portion of this hearing. Uh, is there anyone that would like to make? Yes, please. Please uh, come up to the microphone and state your name and address. Hi, Flint Wass at uh, 34365 Road 196. We are the house directly to the 
east of it, and it's not close west. to the west, no, to the east of it. And it's not that it's so close, but what you don't see on the picture is their house is up here, then it all drops down through a hill, and then our house is a little higher the other way, so everything goes directly across, and all the dust. But all I want to say is we have no opposed to the new map that would settle everything, so. It works for you. That oh, works yeah. for us we, they, we tested it with them. Yeah. They came down, sat in our backyard, and the shield worked great. The other headlights so are directly into our back windows. The whole Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. I wish Evan Malden worked out oh, that. Oh, I do too. Uh, this is a perfect <laughs> example. <laughs> okay, is there any other comment? Anyone else like to? Okay, thank you. I will now close the public comment period. Is there I'm anything ready. that? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that, you know, I've actually been out to that site before and it's a really <laughs> a nice place for gatherings in the countryside. And also I think there's a willingness here on the part of the, the uh, operators, the applicant to um, you know, do what's necessary and get along with the neighbors. So I, I think it's one of the best cases we could have in this particular situation. Well, having Our county government at its best. <laughs> yes. I'd like to make a motion then to uh, uh, approve and uh, authorize the planning director <laughs> consider the uh, minor modification, MIM 16-036, uh, to modify the previously approved special use permit. Uh, uh, number P, uh, PSP 11-037 uh, <coughs> as uh, indicated in the presentation today. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Could we have a vote, please? Gong? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Tigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you very much. The motion is approved. <coughs> Thank you to staff also, that's very nicely done. Okay, we have items for discussion, review, and action. We have election of the Planning Commission Chair. <coughs> and uh, we did have some discussion at our last meeting. Do we have some clarification? Hi, uh, Hi. Jeff Kuhn, Deputy County Council. Um, I believe the, the question was whether or not uh, Mr. Aguilar was um, eligible or and the uh, conclusion we've come to is yes, uh, he is. Very good, thank you very much. Chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I thought it was vice chair. I think it is vice first, isn't it? Yes. Either, either, way, either way is. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Who's and I. On that? I don't have that from last meeting, so our chair is, is it you? It's John. That's it's right, me, because but you'll be chair <coughs> also with the, okay. Right. It, it's me, but I want to say I'm not going to be here the first meeting, so Gil's going to get thrown ah. his feet right in the fire, so Great. he becomes the vice. So. Great. He's got big shoulders. He'll be all right. <laughs> so we will vote to select the chair for 2017, who would be John. And Can we nominate John first, or he's yeah, it looks yeah. like I think so. There's two actions here, right? Yes, yes. So yeah, I'd like to nominate John as chair. Okay. No second. Thank you, and do we have the vote? Gong? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Elliot? I'll abstain. Yes. Relax. Can you call the question on that? No, no. yes. <laughs> Tigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Thank you. If you question, you have to do it, Bill. <coughs> That's you got, right. You've got to be the chair. That's <laughs> right. Okay, we will now have the election of the Planning Commission Vice Chair for 2017. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion we nominate uh, Mr. Aguilar as the Vice Chair and a full member of our commission now. I'll second that. Thank you. Could we have the vote? Gong? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Yes? Yes. Willatch? Yes. Pitigliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. 
<laughs> Thank you. Motion carried. We have. I a do have a question, though. Um, I'm still going to be an alternate, correct? Because that would have to be an action of the supervisors, which I so which means if they select another <coughs> person for the vacant position, I don't vote if there's a full panel. So I don't know if that's an issue. I think that would be correct, but um, I, could, I think we can cross that bridge when we when we come to. Okay. It. Maybe so. there's some changes down the pike. Sounds like a formality. We're not going to weasel you out, so yeah. too bad. No, I already voted for myself, so I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you I very much. Uh, on that note, I just want to thank all of my fellow commissioners for your help and for your cooperation. While I was chairman, um, I have a lot of great helpers. This is by far the easiest job that I've had so <laughs> thank you very much thank okay. you for a good work good good service okay could we have uh, planning directors update sure. uh, I just uh, thank you for the compliments for the staff for uh, the negotiations on that prior use permit <coughs> it, nice. it's it's nice and clear here we went through numerous meetings with numerous uh, neighbors of almost two years of trying different approaches and stuff and this is what the result was, and this is what we want to show you, a nice, simple, easy thing, but there was a lot going on before we got to this point. So uh, I think it's the best compromise all around. Uh, Board of Supervisors took action, final action, on um, affirming your decision regarding Dollar General in near Springville. Uh, so that, that is now finally done. Uh, also they took a, a urgency ordinance for non-medical marijuana. Uh, to prohibit that in uh, in the county uh, for 30, 45 days, but then they'll be looking at it again in January to potentially extend that to a 22-month, uh, basically, moratorium until uh, plans can be developed to, uh, to appropriately respond to the new um, laws. Um, Ashita and Cox will be serving out their um, last couple meeting, or last meeting next week. Uh, uh, today at noon, I believe, Ashita's having a retirement party um, over at the Lamplighter, and I'm sure that you're all more than welcome to, to join. Um, so I know you have timing to, won't be perfect for it, but <laughs> there's a little gap here. But You have to pay. <laughs> pay to play? No, pay, <laughs> pay to, to dine. To <laughs> pay to dine. <laughs> I think, I, I think you have to talk to Michelle Baldwin for that. <laughs> She's the one that's organized the whole event. Uh, and then next month will be the board will be bringing on uh, Amy Shuckley and, and Kyler Cocker, Crocker uh, on uh, the board. Go, looking forward to the next year. Uh, again, there's a number of projects that will be coming to, to your your uh, commission. We'll be bringing the Hamlet plans, uh, which are essentially a, a small version of a community plan. We're going to bring like 23 of them all at one time. So you're going to have a huge. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to present it in a manner that will be simplified, but it'll be a, it'll be a big impact to uh, our small rural communities to, to help be able to spur some economic development activity, and uh, so that we're looking forward to that. That will be in the springtime. Uh, also, want to look forward to having some additional presentations to your commission from planning staff and public works, uh, as we did the road or the bridge uh, uh, presentation a, a few meetings back. Uh, I think it's appropriate for you to be informed on, on the processes, the programs that we go through. Maybe we can look towards something for the Samara uh, program, uh, a presentation perhaps maybe in the spring or summer on that program, and other things similar to that, maybe employee housing, how that works, uh, our abandoned vehicle abatement programs, public works road maintenance, those types of things. We, we can try to sprinkle some of those throughout the year to keep the, your your commission informed on, on what, what's going on besides just the land use uh, pieces of the RMA. And uh, with that, I know we have a, a storm of ruin here in the next couple of days, and maybe Reed can address how we're preparing for that, and if any of the other uh, planners have any other decisions or choices. Uh, before we get to Reed, uh, first of all, we'd like to recognize him as the uh, Public Works Absolutely. Assistant Public Works Director for 
Tulare County. Oh. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> right, so I'll let Reed go. <laughs> Maybe he'll learn a uh, microphone soon, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Get to move up to the adult table here. And just sit and over to the Child's chair. Um, from the public works and engineering branch perspective, I think we've had a real good year. We've gotten a lot of projects done, and instead of kind of rehashing them, I'll talk about maybe four that we're working on currently that uh, kind of represent what we're looking at in from that perspective. Um, water is a big one, so two of the issues that we're dealing with, Mike touched on one, it's the storm coming. Um, we deal with a lot of flood control issues, so we are prepared. We're hoping that we get as much as possible. We prefer it to be kind of distributed evenly, but sometimes it comes in one big slug. Um, but we are ready for this storm and any future storms that may be coming. I just checked the weather report and it looked like an inch to an inch and a half. Wow. Earlier this week they were saying maybe up to four inches in the foothill area. So it could be a pretty significant rainfall. But we've got our, our crews who um, basically are on standby and ready to respond 24 seven. They go out and clear drains, make sure that the pumps are working. Um, if tree branches fall down, they'll drag them off the road. Um, but one of the big ones, and we don't really think of it down here in the valley so much, is they do a lot of snow plowing. So we plow um, in the Camp Nelson area and the um, Pine Flat, California Hot Springs area. Um, and then sometimes up in the, the Badger area uh, in that location if it gets it. But they do spend quite a bit of time and effort um, plowing snow and keeping the roads cleared up there. So the other side of water is the drought issues that we've been dealing with. And on that field, we're taking water out of the ground in contrast to putting it in the ground. Um, we've got a new water system going in in the community of Monson. Um, the, a couple state agencies and federal agencies have really stepped up to the plate and provided some funding for us to be able to go in. And there's probably 50 or so houses in that community. Their wells have been going dry, as I'm sure you're aware. And so that project just went out to bid uh, yesterday. So it'll be a new well and a distribution system for a community water system there in Monson. And the end goal would be to connect that to the community of Sultana water system with the long-term plan of connecting a number of those smaller systems in Northern Tulare County to a surface water system in coordination with Alta Irrigation District so that they will have both the, the wells, the groundwater access, but also access to surface water. I think that's kind of the big long-term uh, sustainability type uh, uh, response to the issues for a lot of these smaller communities in northern Tulare County. So the surface water, that's, that's a few years out, definitely that's an ongoing project. But hopefully by spring, early summer, we'll have Monson connected to, to some, a good source of water. And then roads is the other big one that we work on. Um, we've got two interesting <coughs> projects right now that are out to bid. One, if you're familiar with the traffic signal on Orange Belt in Strathmore, um, it's a, an older traffic signal and it's on a timed setup. So you may sit there and it's green for everybody else, but there is nobody else going through. So we're replacing, we're replacing that um, with <coughs> so it'll sense and know who's, um, who's uh, actually activating the signal there and then doing some ADA, some uh, Disability Act upgrades for the curb ramps around that. And then the other one that we're doing right now is a um, traffic safety improvement. Uh, about 50 or so intersections throughout the county, stop controlled intersections. We're doing some uh, miscellaneous minor upgrades to that bigger stop signs, some solar powered flashing beacons. As you drive through the county, you may have seen those popping up more and more. Um, we do a lot in school areas to kind of notify drivers to slow down. So that's a, a big project that we're dealing with right now. But yeah, I think it's been a real good year for us. We've got a great crew, um, both on the engineering side and then definitely all the guys out in the, the road yards that uh, get those 2 a.m. phone calls to go make sure that the roads are safe and clear. Speaking of Strathmore, they're undefeated in football going for the state championship. Friday. They're only one of like two or three teams that are undefeated. And that's Exciting. a pretty big deal for Strathmore, really. For anybody. Yeah, yeah, pretty fantastic. <clears throat> okay, do we have any other? Just a question, Reed. We're going we're to try to grab as much of that water as we can before it gets by us, aren't we? That's Absolutely. We've yeah. got, um, from a flood control perspective, we're looking to no longer just protect the facilities, but capture and retain and... Perfect, perfect. Uh, 
uh, just real quickly, uh, since we are coming down to the end of the year, um, as far as statistics, we have approved uh, 371 projects this year. So since I've been here, that's a, a new grand total beyond what we've ever done. Um, as far as the uh, what Mike was talking about is the actual uh, community plans that will be approved uh, through this grant. There'll be uh, six community plans, new community plans, uh, urban development boundaries that have never had those before. Um, there will be 10 Hamlet plans, seven legacy plans, in addition to the three community plans uh, that we're currently working on as far as early March, Three Rivers, and uh, Ivanhoe. So, like Mike said, that's going to be quite a bit to, to bite off in one meeting, but uh, hopefully uh, through the process it won't be too painful for you. Um, <coughs> outside of that, uh, I did... Um, I did want to say that the uh, environmental division uh, has really uh, helped and stepped up to uh, keep up with these uh, projects to a high degree. Uh, all these obviously have CEQA that go along with them, so it's uh, it's actually two projects that are, are in two entitlements, uh, no matter how you look at it. So, uh, 370 for us and 370 for him every time. <coughs> Uh, actually, it's even more because mm -hmm. all the road projects and the flood projects require CEQA too, as well. So <laughs> it, it really it really piles on this guy right here. <laughs> well, and, and 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 in addition, there's the uh, state and the federal permitting that goes along with it that we uh, do. So quite quite a bit of work we've gotten done over the last last year for sure. Uh, little. You guys, uh, Mike touched on it just a little bit, but uh, is there any uh, feel for where we might be headed on this uh, marijuana uh, decision and, and, and well, application? I, it appears that nothing at this time. That's, that, that seems to be, you know, to, to, to stay fast on that. Maybe in a couple of years, I'm sure John has something to say on that. Uh, well, and, and maybe in a couple of years where, where the complexion of the uh, Board of Supervisors is changing. We're having two new members coming on board now, so that's two. And in a couple of years, there's at least one change for sure, and there will be an additional election as well. So for two years, two and a half years from now, we may have four different board members than we have currently, so. Well, I, I wanted to, I attended the um, proceedings at the supervisors that day too. There's an article in the Commonwealth that's out in the lobby this week that I wrote about it. And a couple of things that I saw that the, um, you know, from a law enforcement perspective, we have this, uh, you know, this uh, inconsistency with the federal policy on this. This, is, this could change too, but one of the things we have here is we want, we want to force the legal, there is legal, it's legal now to grow six plants indoors, anybody that wants to. It's over 21 years old per household. So what we want to do in the county, according to what the Board of Supervisors passed, this interim ordinance, is we want to force this growing indoors. And then Chief Charlie Norman gets up the fire chief and we're having more fires because of the Mickey Mouse wiring to put the lights on the indoor plants. So this is going to be a push come to shove when more people start growing indoors. So what I see with the new board coming in is uh, down the road, we're going to have to have a more realistic policy about this. And um, eventually, because we're going to see other counties moving to do this in other jurisdictions, um, we will have to grow outdoors and define the status of that as some product, whether it's agricultural or some other kinds of commercial product. We have two years to kind of work on that because the state's not granting commercial licenses till 2018. It is coming. We can't afford to stick our heads in the sand and pretend like it isn't. So I think we're better off kind of preparing for it and maybe set up, this is one thing, one idea that's been batted around, is set up kind of like a community garden situation which is protected and regulated and people license into getting a plot and then when they produce from that plot, they pay a tax to the county on the sale of that. So. There's a lot of, you know, right now, we, it's just like the law enforcement said in the, in the testimony. They don't know what's going to happen, and we don't really have a good 
instrument yet to um, ascertain whether someone's under the influence behind the wheel of a car either, and that's really important. Now, Silicon Valley is really working on this because a lot of their money financed the legalization of this, and I've been hearing that there's going to be an app that's going to be available to the law enforcement people that they'll be able to determine soon if someone's under the influence of marijuana. So that's, a, that's another whole problematic part of this. Um, we, people are going to do it, and I think one thing that we didn't address as the county is how do we get it out of our national parks? We need to have a policy that will drive the cartels and the growers that are on our public lands to go elsewhere. I'm not sure what that is, but this is what we got to do in the next two years is work out. I know what it is. Nancy will back me up here. We've got such good farmers in here. If we could produce so much of that stuff that we'd crush the cartels, put them out of business because well, it'd, be it'd be worth alfalfa. Well, the thing is, is there's a there, there's an efficient way of doing it. You know, one of the things is the water. You know, they're saying it uses too much water, but there's an efficient way to do that if the growing was regulated. And the same thing with the, I mean, we have, coming down the Cahuilla drainage is polluted water from growers. You know, and that's ridiculous to allow that to go on. And then we're using that water in the county. So I think we need to be a little more proactive in our approach. In talking with Crocker and Amy, you know, I think there's going to be a change on the board in terms of that attitude for the future. And um, we just got to put the best heads together and figure out how we're going to do this. And it can be done. I mean, other counties are going to do it. And, you know, the revenue thing is kind of uh, pie in the sky. But it can be done in a cost-effective manner. There's going to be a demand for it anyway. So I say we get it out of our national parks. Our national park is the best thing the best attraction we have in terms of people from all over the world that want to come to Tulare County, and I think we, we need to address that, that problem. Bear is calm down. <laughs> yeah, the few that are left. We did lose a lot of bears, by the way, and the drought was responsible. We've had many of them hit by vehicles this year. We've had over a dozen bears killed on the roadways this year, some in the park and some in Three Rivers, and it's, uh, that's another thing is working with Caltrans to get them to slow the traffic down in Three Rivers. We have people driving through there in 50, 60 miles an hour, and a lot of them are locals, driving through Three Rivers and uh, hitting bears. And it's, it's something we need to address for the future, there's no doubt. Just a quick comment. <coughs> I'm getting over a nasty cold. Uh, one of the things that the city of Isaiah is noticing is that now that uh, it is perceived to be a legal activity you could do anywhere is in our parks, uh, you know, where kids go to play, a bunch of guys get together and light up, and, uh, you know, trying to control that is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I think the city is working on it. I, I'm a president of a free uh, medical clinic up on the north side, and, and uh, there's a place called the Whitman Center where a lot of kids go in the afternoon that was a big problem and they've also limited the hours so when you guys are thinking about parks uh, that I think that's uh, something that should be considered that uh, you know alcohol and, and marijuana that's that's not the place and uh, well smoking in general has been outlawed in a lot of parks and a lot right, of public but I'm spaces. just saying in they, they're, it's perceived to be legal whether it is or not and then you guys, guys, ex-law enforcement like myself, it was always difficult. What do I want to waste my time with a guy at one joint? And so, I, th I think there's some, you know, some signs: no alcohol, no drugs uh, allowed in this park, because it does affect children that are there. And the third thing is, I maybe there was only two things. Second thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll think of it later. Okay. Well, is that uh, the smell, you know, community gardens sound wonderful, and it is if it's vegetables, but the marijuana is the worst smelling, most obnoxious plant that I, I don't see how anybody could grow it in their house. You might as well have a pet skunk, you know. Well, there was a guy bad. that testified at the hearing for the um, Board of Supervisors. He says, come on, we've all been smelling dairies all our lives. You know, how could that be any worse, you know? so It is. It is worse. It well, is. it's all in the, it, the you know, it's in the, in the 
in the, the smell of the holder. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> You know, there's some people that skunk smell is the best smell they could ever imagine. But if, you're, if people are toting up, I mean, and you have them roll down the window, that stuff hangs all over their clothes. So it is Tobacco amazing. smells does too. Yeah. I smelled it on John the other day. But yeah. I, say, <laughs> I haven't smoked since college, and that's a long oh, time. Oh, you didn't inhale. Uh. Yeah, I didn't, but I you didn't, didn't inhale, inhale, right? Okay. <laughs> are, are we ready to adjourn? This has gotten off. <laughs> Get out of control. <laughs> well, That's one. my job. Your That's my one. job is to keep you these crazy job. people. Okay, I am going to adjourn the meeting, and we will reconvene on January 11th at 9 o'clock with our new chairman. Yeah. Thank you.